Today's video, we're going to be roasting my old renders and then trying to remake one of them uh, completely from scratch since all the plant files are uh, purple now. So this is the first one that I have on my PC, which I kind of like. One of the first ones I was proud of on this PC. Uh, I can see a lot of things I need to improve, but overall, I think this is uh, this was a pretty cool image. And now this one. Which is the planet series. I've made the, some multiple renders of the same planet. And I think these are pretty cool. They hold up still. You can see uh, this wave texture I've used. Which is, uh, it gives a really nice touch. Then we have this one, the abandoned train. As you can see, this is the part where I kind of try to make my own style. This is the origin of my current style. So if you see my Volkswagen Beetle scene from the last video, you can see a pretty common theme with them, which is just overgrown abandoned things, which I really like. And I'm making a game now, which will probably be next video, where I just explore this idea and make some cool things in there. This one uh, looks uh, even more garbage than the last one. As you can see, I've used a lot more of those vines and IV generators. And this probably also has like 5 million polygons. This car model was ripped from Sketchfab, I believe, and the jerry can from Mega Scans. Then the trees were just a free pack. Again, as you can see, there's no horizon, no something blocking off the horizon. The trees are just the same again. There's no like changing in the hue or saturation of different trees. It's all the same. I did add some foreground elements, which uh, which is pretty cool. That's uh, nice, nice development. Some things here as well, pretty nice. Overall, as you can see, I, I used the use saturation in Vyanod to change the color of this, but then it also changed the leaves, which is like not that. It's pretty weird. I also added this uh, fake uh, city in the background where you can just uh, see, see the white edges. It's pretty bad. It's not even color corrected, right? Uh, but it does indicate me learning something about the horizon. Overall, pretty bad render. So right here in Blender, we first need to make the road material which I've already made a video about, luckily. So you can add it in a plane. And then I'm just going to do that really quickly. And I'll see you when I'm done with that. So right here, I have a really simple, just a rope material. I already had uh, made a asphalt uh, texture. Uh, I'll leave this material up on my gum roads under monthly support, so you can download it there. Uh, but I just added in a gradient with some uh, constant offsets here. You can just uh, watch the tutorial if this is uh, too much for you. So right now, I'm just going to have a straight road. So just have an array modifier. For this one, uh, this is the first video that I'm using a uh, that I'm using Blender 4. So that's pretty cool. There's some uh, big changes here, like uh, this modifier thing and the nodes working differently. But this is my uh, roads, and we just have to scale this up so it makes sense. So this uh, lane should be two meters. So uh, scale this up twice. And then all transforms. And now if I add in a car with the traffic add-on, just going to find the closest car. So we had a BMW and now we're just going to add in a BMW as well. If we have that. Oh, here. Yeah. Can make this editable. And this will be in real scale. So should probably make this a little bit bigger. Uh, so three meter lane, which uh, now that I think of it, makes more sense. Uh, place it right there. Doesn't really matter where it is right now. Just going to build build around it. But it wouldn't make sense for the car to be in the middle of the road now, would it? So we're just going to place it on the right hand side of the road where it would be driving away from the city. And then just uh, kind of rotate this a little bit. And this is uh, pretty much everything we need. It's not really much more. We can set up a camera angle, which will probably do something like uh, just find the best angle, something like this. Yeah, that looks uh, pretty cool. I think for the composition wise, we can uh, tweak that later, of course, uh, if there are some problems with the grass. But for now, I think we're just going to add in another plane. So first, just uh, make this the length of the road. So it uh, blocks off the camera, which is uh, pretty much just this. And then just drag this out on the X axis as well, just so we have a little bank of the road where we can make our grass. It's probably uh, as much as I did in the older renders. Just I've improved, I'd like to think. So we're just going to do this properly, getting a even quad distribution or something close. We can subdivide this a bunch of times. 
something like uh, this resolution or the one before. And then we can start with the proportional editing. So just turn it on, go into face mode or vertex mode, and then just extrude some hills. Then we can add in a ground material, which I've also made a texture for. So I'll just use that. And then we can add all of our grass assets. So I'm just going to do it with botanic. I think uh, back then I used to use uh, just all the uh, nature things from Quicksaw and, th and things like that. Didn't really have paid add-ons. I just did everything manually and now it's made easy just with one click of a button. With Control B I'm going to limit my view so I only see what's important. And then we need to add in some trees. So I'm just going to spawn those in. And this looks pretty cool. Uh, now we can just uh, break up the horizon by making another hill just off to the side here. Normally I just uh, like place it anywhere. It doesn't really matter where it is as long as you just have some place to kind of break up the background. So just uh, subdivide this a couple times, not too much. And then just move these up a little bit so they're kind of different. And then just give it the same material with Control L. We can do that. On here, we can actually scatter these trees. So, and now you've broken up the horizon successfully. So, congratulations, you did it. We can duplicate this again to the other side because everything you don't see also casts shadow. So, we can use that shadow to make it more believable. You don't have to have as much um, trees on here, just so you get some nice accents. This already becomes much more moody, but in my original one, there was a lot more sun. So I'm going to trace, stay true to that and uh, get some more light in here. So go over to the world properties, add in a sky texture. And since we don't see the sky, we don't need much more. Just uh, make sure to play with the ozone. I like it uh, really high. And then the air, we can uh, turn that down or up according to what we want. Something like this works pretty nicely or something uh, like this, a little longer shadows. Just making sure we get some of those uh, leaf textures. We get the leaf textures on the road. That's really cool to look at. I think we can now add some rocks to the scene just by uh, going into edit mode here, pressing W to get the circular select and then just selecting some of the vertices here. Going over to a new vertex group and assigning those. If you want, you can select some more vertices and just uh, add them to the selection. And then just play with the scaling. Doesn't have to be uh, too big. Scale randomness as well. And then just change all these values like you want them. Next, I really want to add in some fog, some mist, something mysterious. Mist, mysterious. So, add in a volume cube. Just a cube. And move it up by one meter so we have the origin point at the bottom so we can scale it up three times and then just grab this uh this face here and just move it until it envelops the part of our scene where we want the volume metrics to be i always like to be in the cube with the camera so like this and uh kind of move it until we can't see the edge anymore somewhere like here that's where i want the volume metrics to be until somewhere like uh, right there and in the top as well just move it until we can't see the edges again so this is how i make my volume cubes just inside the camera since the rest doesn't really matter in the object we can then make a new material call this uh, mist i also want uh, god rays so maybe volume scatter is the best option it just makes the scene a little bit more heavy but we can fix that with some denoising, of course. And some nice fire metrics. Yeah, I like this. I also want to change the car material to be the, the rusty brass I made in one of my older videos. So just uh, find the car paint and then just remove that and add in a new material and then call this rust. So this is what it looks like. It's a little bit too heavy, too much rust. So what we're going to do is add in a new material here and just cut back that car paint just so we can copy this. Control C, go over to the rust material and paste it in here. 
and then I want to mix these. So with control, shift, and the right mouse button, and then dragging over them, I can mix these two together with a musgrave texture. And also map this to be the object coordinates. Set this to like a two, maybe. Yeah, two something. And then with a math node, we can set this to greater than or less than. Doesn't really matter that much. And if we preview this, we can see what will be rust and what will be normal. Add in some detail. Add in some or remove some dimension. And this is much better. Now I'm going to shift right click on this headlight here because I want to focus my uh, camera there. Then add in a empty plane axis and go over to your camera. And then just enable depth of field and select your empty. Now you can change the f-stop to something like 0.1, it's really dramatic. And you can see you're only focused on the headlights here. Set this to uh, like 0.8. That's a really nice blurry background. A little bit too blurry. 1.4. It's always uh, just finding whatever works for the scene. It's not really a secret to it. 1.4 is like the most, the lowest you can go realistically speaking. 1.8 is uh, like a high quality camera. And then like a 3 is like a normal consumer grade camera. So don't go too crazy with it. But if it works, it works. And I think this works pretty well. We can do some color grading. Add in a jerry can if I can find a model. And I think we can wrap this one up. So hit render and then I'll do some compositing, some final words and we're done.